Welcome to Art Ferment, the podcast that uncorks the fascinating world where art and wine collide. I'm your host, and I invite you to join me on this sensory journey through the contemporary art and flavors that converge in the cellar of one of Valpolicella's historical wineries. In this episode, we'll be speaking with artist Mariano Chardon. He was born in Bahia Blanca City, Argentina. He's professor at the Baikal Institute in Buenos Aires and Madrid. He was academic advisor from 2004 to 2013 at the Interactive Art Program at Espacio Fundación Telefónica Argentina. He was consultant for the Fondación Daniel Langlois Art Science and Technology Program in Montreal, Canada. He has been mentor and jury member of the European Art Ethical Intelligence Lab, Ars Electronici Center. He studied physics at the Universitat de Buenos Aires. He was visiting scholar at Hypermedia, Studio, Theater, Film, and TV Department at University of California, Los Angeles. He has given numerous conferences and seminars at Center Georges Pompidou, Centrum für Kunst und Medien, CKM, Karlsruhe, Ars Electronica Center, Linz, Austria, among others. He made several solo and collective exhibitions, including here in Italy at the 2017 Venice Art Biennale. He is represented by the Artericombi Gallery in Verona. Welcome to the Art Ferment Podcast, Mariano. You studied physical sciences. Were you already thinking about incorporating science into art? What process brought you from that degree to where you are today? Oh yes, I studied physics at the University of Buenos Aires. And yeah, my artistic process is completely influenced by science. Science gave me a way to create, a way to express myself against numbers, also materials. And from there, I built a laboratory. Art and science seemed to coexist for me in scientific experiments. It was an absorbing experience. Art gave me the freedom to create worlds that could be sometimes impossible or fantastical and illusory. So, yeah, maybe my laboratory where I worked when I was young at university was a kind of worship for art, and I found that everywhere in that laboratory. The Farina Winery hosted a stunning exhibition of your works thanks to the collaboration with the Arterocombi Gallery. We'd love for you to explain the genesis of each piece and the meaning for you. Let's begin our tour by walking through the gallery of colorful ceramic vats where a selection of your wind tunnel series was displayed. Oh yes, the series Wind Tunnels. Yes. Um... It's a series of digital images generated by a computer in which I use an algorithm that can simulate the movement of air. I could change different parameters and apply those algorithms to an image and pixels of an image to move like air, like following the wind. Those monochromatic pieces are produced by an algorithm that downloads images of objects with the same color or very similar colors. Then I ran another number of objects in blue or a set of green things, and so on. Then, applying the algorithm, or rather the wind algorithm that moves the pixels and creates this idea of blowing things, was significant for me because everything could be changed differently. Everything could be thought of differently. Everything. So these pieces are a way to think and challenge how we build the world and how we construct our categorizations of things how we classify things in the world. I think that all of these things are changing rapidly. If until recently we philosophically discussed a liquid world, now we have a gaseous world where every shape can be rethought, suggesting uh, that we need to think differently. And so it's a possibility to create, it's a possibility to recreate the world in terms of different categorizations, of different ways to describe it after the monochromatic wind tunnel series is floating people where a similar work was applied to people the image of people i realized this series of works also could be applied to people the image of people so 
There is a single piece that was shown at the winery where they can see people blown around by this algorithm, like people clinging and yet tossed about um, because our identity also is changing. Our identity is new to be thought about in different ways. So this piece together with the wind tunnel works with that part of our shelter where uh, everything can be rearranged and where we need to start to think in a deconstructive way to think about tomorrow's world. Finally, let's talk about the mesmerizing Wall of Gazes, which was projected onto one of the towering raw concrete vats. Wall of Gazes is one of my most important pieces, and it came up from a different way to think or approach a neuroscientific test that is an ordinary commission of cognition in neuroscientific laboratories. Um, I created this piece with the neuroscientist Mariano Sigmund. We worked for around 10 years together on these kinds of projects where science and art moved closer. We used to have the very same device that allows you to see where and how people look specifically at an image because it's supposed to be important for the brain to gather information from those points that uh, neuroscientists call fixation points. The tracking device allows you to see where in the image the eyes stop while looking for information. Of course, in their science, they gather data time movements and different variables of the eyes of people. But in our case, it's very significant in the context of art history, particularly the portrait. We have thousands of people looking at portraits in museums and never read how they are looking at those portraits. So, what if we reconstruct portraits according to the movement of the eyes of many people at the same time? That is the idea that spawned the Wall of Gazes. It is an experiment, but it took on a strong significance as we conducted the test. Because the way that people look at us is the way we build an image of one another. Identity becomes a kind of collective construction. You can see the very specific parts of the face that are important to people and the, the details that are neglected. This is a significant and telling idea of who you are. This is the most telling part of the piece. The Wall of Gazes was conducted like a realistic neuroscientific research for a vision cognition test where a portrait was shown to around 100 people and uh, we used the eye tracker device to record the movements of the eyes when they looked at the portrait. We repeated the same experience for around 15 portraits and recorded the data. With a significant database, we were able to apply an algorithm to reconstruct each portrait in very slow motion to show how the portrait was built. The portraits are essentially generated by the sum of 100 pairs of eyes gazing at the same portrait. That is what you see when you are in front of this piece and what makes the piece so meaningful. So how is this recent mainstream reach of AI impacting your work today? In science, then when you had uh, algorithmic processes like artificial intelligence and generative artworks, they were very close to my former background and of course something that I'm close to even now in this mainstream moment of artificial intelligence. Yeah, for some reason for me, it's a nice feeling to explore aesthetics algorithmically. Scientists gain the idea of the huge anonymity of the data that we generate every day and in our everyday lives. The way I see it, this mass of data is a kind of archaeological content, in the sense that all that information we generate speaks about ourselves. So when you access it by using algorithms and look for certain information, and recreate and transcend, then the result is in an image. It depends on many variables that you decide, of course, but at the same time, it's a way to gather from our own culture of visuality, our culture of text. That's why I think it's kind of a, an archeological source for humanity. Uh, the tools are becoming available to everyone with AI. And on the other hand, generative works make me think in terms of the idea of a model algorithm that can create many variations of even your ideas or formal aspects of your piece. So I was involved in the development 
of NFT, a kind of variation in an infinity scenario. And of course, this was very interesting because it's a very different way to think about the kind of artistic process you are involved in. The idea of a collection or a series of pieces that could be generated by a unique uh, algorithm makes me think in a very exciting and different way. What I wanted to say is thank you very much for allowing me to share my work with you at the winery and to express myself for this podcast. And of course, I'd like to comment about something that connected my work and the winery in the way you exhibited the wind tunnel series. Seeing my works in a different context was very interesting in that you found a connection with the complexity of wine the different characteristics, the aromas, the nuances of flavors, and the evolution made me think about connecting or knitting the symbolic representation of complexity in wine as a visual idea. When I look at the monochromatic colors of the wine tunnel series in front of the Farina ceramic vats, suddenly, even here, art and science take on meaning. If one imagines or visualizes the complexity of wine as it ages as a blur, all of these initially distinct aromas and flavors begin to fragment into nuances, finding harmony. I can see this like the wind. Thank you for joining us, Mariano. We'd like to toast to you and your art with Farina's Mezzadro a la Fontana which bears the same vintage as the creation of Wall of Gazes 2011. It is an Amarone Reserva that truly dances on the palate and continues to break out into new intriguing aromas. It evokes your description of the pixels in your paintings. This Amarone is only produced in exceptional vintages and represents the pinnacle of innovation in our winemaking tradition. Join us on the next episode of Art Ferment, where we'll continue to ferment inspiration, creativity, and passion one episode at a time. Cheers and welcome to a vintage of art and wine like no other.